it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to this evening's lecture. Um, and it's a great, great privilege to welcome René Gampel to Christie's and, and together with his family. Um, his grandfather, with whom he shares the same name, was, as most of you know, a prominent French art dealer, a collector, and a friend, and a patron of such artists as Claude Monet, Georges Braque. Braque's studio is a large high room with plaster walls. It is very neat, but the linoleum-covered square on which he paints is very dirty. Some 50 small pictures were scattered on the floor, most of them cubist with some charming touches. Then he spoke with awe of the eternal and the transient in art, of the works in the fashion of the day which disappear overnight, and the others which live on. And he mused on the whys and wherefores of this. Pablo Picasso. We met at Paul Rosenberg's. Picasso speaks good French, but has retained a strong Spanish accent. The head of the Cuba school is a blood pudding, a bleached blood pudding. He's not yet 40, has brown eyes like very worn counters in a child's game. The face of this pudding is cut by six perpendicular lines, as though the strings of its muslin bag had been untied, falling from the eyes, the nostrils, and the corner of the lips. And Marie Laurencin, just to name a few. Marie Laurencin asked me when she could come to sign her latest canvas, for in my absence she did Ernest's portrait. When she says sign, she means, when can I come for my money? She will get 5,000 francs a week from Tuesday, as she is very busy until then. I told her that she is quite well known in America, and she replied that it is, in fact, the only country where she is known at all. She wanted me to tell her what I thought of the portrait. I admitted that my wife doesn't care for it. The artist replied that it is not a bad sign, that she is afraid of being understood too quickly. His story is not mine to tell, but where we intersect is this magnificent Monet, Les Meulages Giverny, um, identified recently as, as having once been in the collection of um, René Guimpel, its change of hands during the Second World War, and the circumstances in which that must have happened has been acknowledged in the settlement agreement between the Gampel family and the current holder. Um, it's precisely such transfers of works, displacement, looting, and its consequences that also occupies the restitution team here at Christie's. It's an issue which Christie's has engaged with since the early years of renewed interest in Holocaust era assets, which began to find international recognition again in the mid to late 90s, and certainly with the 1998 Washington Conference on Holocaust Era Assets, our prime goal um, is to ensure that we're not selling works of art which may not have good provenance. We scan works which may have been confiscated or sold under duress during the Nazi era, as well as for other cultural property which may have been looted or illicitly traded. <laughs> 